Hey, welcome back to Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. I have some exciting news to share with you guys regarding a quick review on the market, some institutional ownership, and some big news regarding a backlog for ALPP, some allocated funds that will be distributed from the president for batteries, so hello ABML, and I have an exciting announcement to share with you at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. All right, well, let's get into it. Alpine 4 Holdings, a leading operator and owner of small market businesses subsidiary RCA Commercial has set a new monthly record for new orders of 4.5 million, swelling their backlog over to 6.5 million. The increase in demand was largely attributed to its unique healthcare design televisions, which are largely used in hospital settings. Hospital settings can include and not limited to you know, let's say where you go to get your checkups, it can be a senior living setting, it can be a mental health facility, a correctional medical facility. So that's just to name a few of some of the places that can utilize some of the televisions that RCA supplies in the hospital setting. Jeff Kingston, president of RCA Commercial had this to say, our healthcare related products really make a difference for patient care and comfort. And we are pleased but not surprised at the level of demand we have for this product line and in RCA commercial family of products. Kent Wilson, CEO of Alpine 4 had this to say, with new ESS products under development and demand for our existing healthcare and hospitality products at all time highs, we are very excited to see the progress the RCA team is making. Well, anyway, this is just a quick update. If, you were, if any of you guys were paying attention to the market today for ALPP, it was up as high as 14%. I think it ended the day just under around 11%, as you can see here. And it was actually a pretty good day nonetheless. For any of you day traders out there or anyone that is a short-term investor, you know, definitely be wary of the green Mondays. I feel like these past three or four Mondays have been super green and we have just been decimated for the latter part of the week, no matter what sector it is. And as you guys can see here, I'm not going to identify exactly what companies these are, but I did find this to be pretty unique. These three charts that you see, three different companies, three different sectors, and check that out. They're all following the same trajectory. So, um, just, you know, take that, take that for what it is. Like always keep in mind, Mondays are typically green and that's kind of been the pattern. I know today was the first day of a new month, so we'll see how that goes. But for anyone out there, you know, we have the fed talking, we're going to get job numbers coming out and more importantly, we'll be getting CPI data coming out soon as well. So stay tuned for those three uh, milestones that we should be looking out for. And let's just see exactly how that will affect the market for the remainder of the week and more importantly, the remainder of the month. I know I get some comments about, you know, how how is the stock still, you know, being, you know, battered as much as it is and are there any institutional investors or, you know, will this thing ever go up? Hey, that's a fair question. I, I can't answer that, but I can answer the question in regard to institutional investors. It was actually just released today that ALPP now has new institutional investors that have joined the party, specifically with Fidelity, as you can see here. And it's not like they only bought one share. They bought many, many hundreds of thousands of shares for certain, for some of their indexes. So, you know, we're now at the total, I believe, around 69 open positions for institutional ownership. Again, we want to get to like that Chipotle level with about 90%. We're far from it, but at the end of the day, it's always nice to see the institutional ownership increasing, even in times when the market just has seemed going down, down, and down. And if you guys have been paying attention to, you know, the big investors out there, I believe Warren Buffett just said that this past quarter, he's probably in invested the most amount of money into securities that he has since like 2008. So, you know, always try to follow the big money. Of course, we're not going to get those numbers until about 45 days after the fact, but it's always nice to see that we're getting green boxes with regard to institutional ownership and that their positions are only increasing over time. So... Okay, I got some pretty exciting news that came from the White House that I think will have a huge impact for companies that have anything to do with lithium ion batteries and specifically for companies that recycle lithium ion batteries such as ABML. Biden administration announces $3.1 billion for America's battery shortage. The effort is part of a broader push to encourage American independence when it comes to precious minerals that fuel much of 
modern life but come from places like Russia and Ukraine as well as China. Russia supplies about 20% of the world's nickel and both Russia and Ukraine are central to global supply chains of other precious metals. China dominates lithium production and Biden called efforts to secure battery components critical to end our long-term reliance on China and other countries for inputs that will power the future. Now, this should be no surprise if any of you guys have been following the channel. This is something that many companies are trying to gravitate away from, specifically with how much we rely on other countries for some of these precious metals. And not only for these precious metals, but also for the parts that go into some of the supplies that are required for some of these companies. For example, you know, ALPP did a whole revamp of all their parts to make sure that everything is American made and there is no, there is zero reliance on China for any of their drone production in any capacity. And that's just one, that's just one example. The money will be made available in the form of grants to companies looking to build plants in the United States to process the raw components of batteries into finished products. Officials note the funds will require a match from the recipient company and the minimum grant will be $50 million. That means the new plants will cost at a minimum $100 million each. Industry players have long noted that batteries are key to EV manufacturing. The General Motors CEO, Mary Barra, told Yahoo Finance Monday that for electric vehicles, it's all about the battery. During Monday's conversation, Barra also discussed plans to launch multiple new American plants for battery manufacturing, which will presumably be able to take advantage of some of these funds from Washington, D.C. to get them off the ground. This funding announcement will punch above its weight in not only accelerating a transition to a clean transportation future, but also in securing one of the most important supply chains in the United States economy. Brian Deese, the director of Biden's National Economic Council, had this to say, that President Joe Biden has prioritized the battery supply chain as the key for the nation's economy and security. The bipartisan infrastructure law has more than $7 billion in total directed towards the U.S. battery supply chain with initiatives like recycling, critical minerals for domestic manufacturing. There are billions more set aside for things like EV charging stations and electric buses. And for any of you guys out there that are into EVs, let me know in the comments below what electric buses companies are catching your attention at this time. Because I know of a few but I would love to hear what you guys are looking at right now too. And as most of us know, especially if you fall in the EV market, the goal is to have at least half of all cars that are made by 2030 to be electric. And with that, that's gonna come with a massive increase in battery production. And it, mind you, these batteries are predominantly are lithium ion based. You know, for all my ALPP longs out there, it seems like we're ahead of the race when it comes to solid state batteries and just for any of you guys know, that's it's a combination of lithium ion with graphene to help extend the battery life, keep them cooler for longer periods of time, as well as maintain a small size, which ultimately reduces the weight, which is always beneficial for an EV car. And as you can see in this bipartisan infrastructure plan, the bill includes about 500 billion in new spending and about $151 billion is dedicated to climate and energy. And of that climate and energy, about three of it's going to be dedicated to the EV market. And of that, the White House said on Monday, it will also set aside a separate $60 million in grants for battery recycling initiatives, both of which will support an effort to reduce our reliance on competing nations like China that have an advantage over the global supply chain. And just a friendly reminder, the American Battery Technology Company's battery tech team is focused on developing and evolving these precious metals and battery metals extraction technologies that achieve lower environmental impacts, lower costs, and higher domestic source content than conventional recycled and virgin source metals. The White House has deemed EV battery production to be in the interest of national defense and even invoked the Defense Production Act recently. The invocation of the act, which allows the president to require businesses to take actions deemed necessary for national defense, allows the White House to force the building up of domestic production capabilities in these key materials. In other ways, it paves the way for more mining. Wednesday's announcement is focused on lithium ion batteries and not intended to spur further mining or production of the raw materials. 
Rather, it will give companies more tools to process the existing supply. The administration says the money will help companies process the materials needed to make lithium ion batteries, such as lithium, cobalt, nickel, and graphite, and help mitigate supply chain disruptions in the years ahead. The money announced Monday will help to underwrite the private investment we need in the United States to build a reliable industrial capacity. That's just a quick update on some of the news that came out today from the White House, specifically on how they're going to allocate some of the funds from the infrastructure bill and dedicate it solely towards EV, but more importantly, towards lithium ion batteries and recycling. So if you guys want more information on this, check the link below so you guys can check that out. You know, as an ABML long, I, I do feel that the company will benefit from this. Now, exactly how much of that $60 million grant will be provided to them is, is unforeseen at the moment. But as you guys have known, they've already accepted a few grants specifically from the state of Nevada, and they've already accepted the challenge, the, the challenge that the president had put in front of them before. And if you guys want more information on that, I'll put the link below because I have a video dedicated solely to that. But anyway, now I do hope in the future we can get a list of what companies specifically will receive some of these allocated funds from the infrastructure bill. And once we hear that, without a doubt, I'll definitely be presenting that into a little bit more detail so we can have an idea of exactly what companies are involved, exactly how much money is going to be, how much money they will receive, and more importantly, what are the time frames of the distribution of these funds. So when we get that information, I for sure will present it and we'll have a whole video dedicated to it. But anyway, just want to give you guys that update. So yeah, the big announcement for tomorrow is that we will have Dan O'Toole, the CEO of Drone Deck, here on the show for an exclusive interview. And I'll be asking him questions regarding the recent expo out in Florida, the relationship with Alpine 4, and more importantly, the future of Drone Deck as a company. And so yeah, that's just to name a few of the things that I will hope to touch on in the interview tomorrow. So for all you guys out there, please stay tuned for that as I anticipate it of being something super great and super informative, especially not only for the channel, but for all those who are excited about the commercial drone space altogether. All right, well, anyway, thank you so much for checking in Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. And like always, I'll see you mañana.